You are listening to Hello Cupcake, It's Me, a podcast with your host, Michael Peterson. Hey everyone, Michael here with Hello Cupcake, It's Me, a podcast. Today is June 15th, 2023, and thanks for hanging with me. If you haven't done so already, hit like and subscribe, then head on over to hellocupcakeitsme.com to give the blog some love, and then head on over to youtube.com slash hellocupcakeitsme to check out the YouTube channel and join in on all the fun over there. So, welcome to episode 70. What is going on, everyone? So, you know, recently I've been listening to some podcasts. Like, I've never really listened to podcasts before, even though I've done 70 episodes now or whatever. I just never, like, actually sat down and listened to one. And so... Uh, I'm, I've started following a couple of podcasts and I really see the appeal and I like it. Like, you know, it's kind of like talk radio or whatever, but for the most part, you know, I just, I kind of like it. So I'm going to be trying to implement some new stuff here with my podcast over the next couple of episodes or maybe even when I kick into season two, um, I still got a lot of stuff that I need to learn about podcasting and getting things situated and all that other stuff. So, um, what are some things that you like about my podcast and what are some things that you don't like about my podcast? I would really love to hear your thoughts and your input and all that other fun stuff. So you can put it in the comment section or like shoot me an email to hello it's me at gmail.com. And let me know there or head on over to the YouTube channel and tell me uh, what you think in the community section or whatever else. So, yeah. But anyways, um, I've been listening to a couple of different um, podcasts. Sorry, kind of jumbled up on my words here this morning. Um, But yeah, one of them is about uh, wine and, uh, one dude's a wine aficionado. The other guy is just a, uh, average Joe that likes to drink wine and it's kind of fun. And there's a lot of production value and stuff like that. And, uh, pseudo big budget to put that on. And, um, I know that there's not a lot of glitz and glam and bells and whistles with my podcast because, well, I don't have a budget to work with, really, and uh, I just do the best I can with what I have available to me, which is, like, the motto of my life. Like, if I was to have a family crest, it would say it somewhere in Latin, do the best with what you have available to you. <laughs> and uh, showing somebody struggling to push a boulder up a hill. <laughs> so, um, anyways, but... Yeah, I, I'm seriously going to try to up the production value over the next, you know, season or whatever. I'm just in the process of trying to get stuff put together, learn more about my personal takes on podcasting, and um, maybe even try to find a co-host or something that I could do um, a show with, because I noticed that there's very little to no podcasts that doesn't have at least two people on there. Uh, but based on what I talk about and things like that, because it's very personal to me and very broad and general, I don't know how I'm going to be able to incorporate a co-host. So again, like I said, that's just some stuff that I've got to figure out and think about and all that other fun stuff. So, um, what's been going on with y'all? You know, I'd like to hear what, what summer plans you have and what, what's been going on and all that other fun stuff. Uh, so far, not much has been going on with me as in terms of like 
summer fun or whatever else. Uh, About the only thing I have done is I've uh, started blogging about my wine experience and I've got a pretty good little following going on with it. Uh, I stopped back in 2016 because I was just like having some serious, serious mental health issues during that time period and uh, didn't just, and you know, I didn't pick it back up until just recently. And so I'm just rediscovering wine, rediscovering like what I do and don't like about this varietal or that varietal or what I like about this vineyard and so on and so forth. And so, um, it's kind of like my nightly gift to myself. I, every night about, uh, 7 30, 8 o'clock, sometimes a little bit later, but usually between 7 30 and 8 30, I, um, I just go out on my little front porch patio. I pour myself a glass of wine and write some notes about it. And then I do a blog post about it. And, um, you know, I'm really enjoying that. Like, I don't do enough for just myself. It seems like I'm constantly on the run doing stuff for everyone else. And so this year I've really focused on trying to just be present for myself. And so that's why I started going to the YMCA. That's why I started doing, you know, playing video games more often and just doing certain things like that because those are things that I enjoy. The YMCA one is for the social interaction and two, it's also for the physical health aspect and three, it really has helped my mental health aspect. And even though I did start going to the Y back in last October, I think my first time at the Y was October 15th or the 27th. I can't remember which one now, but you know, I am coming up on a year and I have noticed that there has been a significant change in the way that I feel. Um, my movements are more fluid and stuff like that. So, you know, just taking these small steps to better ensure my own happiness with myself And, um, even like today, as I'm sitting here recording this podcast, I'm sitting next to the ocean and I'm watching all of the little like ocean life. There's a cruise ship that's coming into port. There's just all kinds of things happening around and, this is my happy place right here. And I'm making it a point to at least three times a week to come to my happy place and just chillax and meditate and do whatever I need to do to like get myself right with myself. And I think that, you know, that's something that we don't do enough of. We are consistently putting other people ahead of ourselves without ever taking time for ourselves because if you're anything like I am I would rather focus on somebody else's issues and help them deal with their bullshit than have to focus on myself but at the same time I don't set healthy boundaries so as I'm focusing on other people's stuff I'm also putting my own needs on the back burner and just leaving nothing in the tank for myself and then having to tap into a reserve that I really don't have to then squeak out a few extra minutes for myself. And there's a lot of like small personal changes that I'm making for myself that I feel are good, healthy changes, but for other people, they would look at it and like, um, no, not at all. So, you know, I'm not doing anything spectacular to like, 
oh, well, you know, this is what I do. So, you know, you have to have fear of missing out and follow me in doing this. Because, you know, what's a flex in my world is not a flex in everyone else's world. But, you know, you getting back to the whole like point of it is that you've got to do things for yourself and those people in your life that are like consistently using you and like taking advantage of you, they are going to say and do and like act a certain way when you start pulling away from them and like setting boundaries, like telling them, no, I really can't do X, Y, Z right now. Um, or I don't feel like doing this right now or whatever. And it's hard. And I'm one of those people that like, I understand needing those boundaries, but at the same time, I'm not one of those people that set those boundaries. And so, like, I feel like I'm consistently available to everyone 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And so when I don't get that same level of energy or that same, like, return in a friendship or whatever, it makes me feel a certain sort of way. And I have to try to remember a lot of times that, well, this person might not have the mental bandwidth for me today or you know look at what's going on in their life or whatever else and sometimes that works out sometimes it doesn't more often than not it doesn't work out for me trying to put put myself in those other people's shoes so um what has worked for me though is like starting to identify what I can put on certain what I can put on what person. So some people, you can only ask them for a cup of sugar. Other people, you can ask them to wake up at 3.30 in the morning and take you to the airport. And that's how I've had to start living my life and categorizing the people in my life. Like, okay, this person, I know I can ask them to do X, Y, Z. And so... If I ask them to go above and beyond that, I they are not able to do that for me. And I know that that sounds very toxic and very manipulative and like I'm using people. But in my mind, it helps me identify who is there for what aspect. Like most times, like I said, I'm available to people 24-7. I'm that person that you could call at three o'clock in the morning and be like, Hey, can you take me to the airport? Like, yeah, let's do this. I just need you to kick down gas and like whatever toll bridge money or whatever else. But yeah, let's do this. Let's go. Um, and so, you know, for me, identifying those traits and those people helps my mental health not take it such like like a betrayal of friendship or like I'm being undervalued and that doesn't mean that I don't love and respect each of the people in my life I just know what I'm capable of asking each person and what level of friendship well I shouldn't even say what level of friendship because in my mind we're equal like I love all my friends, like I said, and all the people in my life equally. It's just, I know that I can't ask my friend, who's a mother of five, to, like, go to a Walmart on 2 o'clock in the afternoon because she's going to be busy at home with the kids or the kids are going to be coming home from school and she's got to, like, do her wifely and her motherly duties. But... The other friend that I have, I know I can ask them to go to Walmart at two o'clock in a, on an afternoon because they're they're usually available at whatever time. One friend I know I can ask to go to the movies with me 
all my other friends I know don't really care for the same type of movies that I do, but this one particular friend does like those type of movies. So they're my movie partner. Um, I want to go grab a beer at the bar. I know that this friend, this friend, this friend, and this friend are sober and going through sobriety classes and stuff like that. But this friend, this friend, this friend, this friend, and this friend can go to the bar with me. But this friend and this friend work from this time to this time. And these other two friends, they're like, hey, drop a dime. We're there. So... That's what I mean by identifying what I can ask of people. And it's not, again, I need to reiterate it, that it's not a manipulative identification. It's just understanding who and what each person is and what I can ask of each person. And so that's really helped me over the last year and a half, two years. More so in this last year because... Like I said, I'm that friend that gives 110% and I'm always there. You can call me up. doesn't matter if I'm sleeping or whatever else. I'm waking up. I'm answering the phone. I'm there dealing with your problems. Your shit is my shit. My shit is my shit type situation. And um, so now that I've identified the people in my life and I know what I can ask of those people, it makes me feel less shitty when I ask somebody to do something with me. Because I'm like, okay, well, you know what? I know that this person wasn't one of those people that I could ask, but I asked on the off chance. So, you know what? Cool. They're not able to do that. They're not able to hang. They're not able to provide this, like, comfort that I need right now. So, okay, now go ask the person that you were originally going to ask. So, anyways, yeah. Uh, Just trying to find the happy medium and balance in life is a struggle. And it's a long-term thing where you have to constantly figure out what works for you and what doesn't work for you because what works for you on a Monday may not work for you next Thursday. So you got to be adaptive also and be forgiving with not only yourself but the people in your life because they are... They're going through their own shit and they're setting their own boundaries and they have their own abilities and mental bandwidth. And you may have just caught them at a time when they don't have the ability to deal with anything else at that particular moment. So, yeah, there's that. (laughs) Sorry about that little ramble. But, you know, that's kind of what this whole blog is that's what my blog and my podcast and whatever is about is just talking from the heart, pseudo unscripted. Um, you know, I do keep a list of things in front of me that like talking points or whatever. And sometimes I go on tangents. Sometimes I don't, um, you know, that's one of those things that's going to help me develop my content better. So, you know, let me know, just kind of bringing it full circle here. Like, let me know what you want to hear, what kind of content you want me to provide, so on and so forth. And I'll do my best to do so. Uh, what else is going on in my life besides that? Um, still doing the, uh, sign language thing, getting pretty good with it. I've got a small base understanding of, uh, the different signs and what needs to be said, how it needs to be said, the facial expressions. Um, My bipolar dyslexia, or not bipolar, but my dyslexia really, really fucks me up in like remembering how to hold my hands and how to um, do the hand movements and stuff. And I need to work on facial expressions 
putting the facial expressions along with the hand signs. Like, so when I say hot, I have to make sure to mouth the word and give the expression of hot. So when you, when you do the hand sign for hot, you have to do this ha with your mouth and then like, look like, ow, I burnt myself or, oh, that's hot. So that's one of those things that that's something I'm needing to work on also. And then the other thing that I need to work on is the similar signs, like the sign for apple and onion are the same exact sign, just at different locations on your face. So onion is with your index finger bent and you push it to the side of your temple like you're crying or wiping a tear away and you do this like up and down motion like you know how you would tell somebody oh boo hoo well you do that at the side of your eye or your temple and you do that same kind of like boo hoo motion that's onion but if you take that same crooked finger and you put it by your mouth and you rub it up and down like the boohoo motion. Um, that means apple. And then there's another one that means job, where you um, tap your wrist together, but on your um, non dominant hand, if your palm is facing up and you touch your wrist together, that means rough sex or rape. So if you're going to a job interview and you're talking in sign language to the person and you flip that around and say, yeah, I want the job. And you flip, you meant to say, yeah, I want the job, but you have your hands flipped. It says, yeah, I want to be raped or I want to have rough sex. (laughs) So um, that's something that I'm like, I'm really struggling with. And then. Um, when I'm finger spelling, trying to remember how to hold my hands and, um, the letters R, S, and T are Q, Q, U, R, S, T really throw me for a loop. So it's kind of counter intuitive, but. Yeah, unless you're studying um, sign language, you, you're probably, like, completely lost right now. But if you want to see what I'm talking about, look up finger spelling on YouTube and um, finger spelling ABCs and watch the differences between Q, R, S, T, and see how they are. So the R, in my mind, is how S should be. So, I don't know. But anyways, I think that's enough for now. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you have fun on this upcoming weekend. And for those members of the LGBTQ community that follow along with my podcast, as well as my blog and my YouTube channel... I want you to know that you are seen, that you are loved, that you matter, that you are welcomed here, and to keep pushing forward, that it does get better, even though it seems like the entire universe is against you right now. And to my drag queen friends, stay strong. You guys are beautiful, and we will get through this you just know that you have an ally and I love all y'all and thank you for listening and thank you for listening to me ramble on and continuing to ramble on. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, put them in the comment section down below. Uh, make sure to follow me over on YouTube and uh, the new Instagram account. Hello cupcake. It's me. And, uh, yeah, I will talk to y'all later. Bye guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. You have been listening to Hello Cupcake, It's Me, a podcast.
with your host, Michael Peterson. Please make sure to check back often as new episodes are released bi-weekly. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to send a message to hellocupcakeitsme at gmail.com. And until next time, stay happy, safe, and keep doing the best you can with what you have been given.